Hello everyone, Will Hyder, Construction Technical Specialist here with ATG, back for another ACC Tech Talk. Today we're going to be taking a high level look at the assets toolset inside of Autodesk Build, its potential use cases, and basic navigation of the toolset itself. So let's get right into it. Uh, whenever we are in ACC, uh, Build specifically, Anything related to assets is going to have this pinwheel icon that you see there. That'll come into play as we talk about some use cases of assets in future videos. You see here, this is my home page uh, for the assets tool set. And what I'm going to do now is just walk through some of these big areas that you see. So on the left here, we have all our asset categories and subcategories. I have some that are trade specific here, and I also have one for a room status. We can really configure asset categories to track whatever we want to on a project, which is why it's my favorite uh, tool set in all of Autodesk Build, and why I think you'll find a lot of value uh, in the tool as well. You see under this electrical category, I have subcategories for generators, panels, transformers. Under mechanical, I have, yeah, HUs, chillers, VAVs. And even under air handling fluids, I have air-cooled and then also air-cooled chillers. And the reason I've set it up this way is because back when I was in industry as a project engineer, I did a lot of mission critical work. And that's also one of the primary use cases you will see for the assets tool set is procurement tracking of MEP equipment. And when I say procurement tracking, what I mean is tracking a total of 21 different steps. So theoretically, you could track a piece of equipment all the way from the manufacturer's submittal through level five con commissioning. It just depends on how you set up the, the assets, the asset status sets which we will talk about in a future video. But for now, just know your categories are going to appear here on the left. The main part of the assets homepage here um, is your assets ledger. It's going to give us the name, the category, uh, the status, if it's linked to any other areas of ACC. You see I have this AHU 999 is linked to sheet M405B. But if it was linked to an issue, an RFI, submittal, it, you would be able to tell just by hovering over the re linked references column uh, right here. It's also going to give us a description, location, barcode, and when it was created. If I click into an asset, let's take this AHU 999, for example, you can see I can change all of these fields. So obviously the name, a description of it, its status, what category it falls into, which again, we'll talk about how to set up these categories in a future video. And then if I have a location uh, for it, so this is gonna be the location hierarchy that you've set up as part of build. It'll appear right here. And you also see, because I've linked a sheet uh, to this asset, that M405B or that other sheet is gonna appear under this placement. Uh, that placement is also where if you've linked an asset to your Revit model, that placement is going to be your Revit model. Again, we'll talk about how to do that in a future video. So that's the details tab. If I go to references, that's just going to show what parts of ACC, what other elements have been referenced into that particular asset. You see, I have a sheet here, but I could also reference in files, issues, uh, schedule which could be potentially be very useful, especially if you're tracking equipment and also cost. So I do have the ability uh, to create cost items directly from this asset area. Last but not least, like we do have with other areas of ACC, uh, we have the activity log. That's gonna keep a full history of all the changes that have been made as part of this asset. If we need to create an individual asset, we can do that right over here by hitting the Create Asset button. 
and you see a dialog box is going to appear where I have to give it the name, the category, and the status for, for that particular asset. I can also optionally add in the location, the description, and again, if I'm leveraging the barcode scanning on my project, I can add in that barcode right there. I want to stress at this point, the more detailed you fill out these assets, the better it's going to be for you down the road. Um, you'll be able to better organize all your assets. You'll be able to report on them easier and see where things are slipping or where you're potentially gaining time and also just better organization overall for your project. So you want to be as detailed as possible when you're creating these and when you're filling them out. So that's how I can create singular assets. If I go over one button to the down arrow, you also see that I can import assets. Now, if I choose this import option, um, it's going to give me an Excel template that I can then leverage and import assets in bulk. Um, if I want to leverage my 3D model to import assets, I would have to do that from the settings area, which again, that's a workflow we'll cover in a different video. The final areas of the assets tool set I want to cover are ones that are going to be pertinent to other parts of ACC, but I just want to show you where they are located here. So we have the filter function right over here on the right, where I can filter by the different statuses. Uh, it does, allows you to filter by multiple status sets, actually. So you see I have my default one here at the top. And then if I scroll down, there's my one for room status. I can also filter by the location, uh, the model, if I leverage the model to import it. And then I can also filter by any custom fields I have set up, which you see I have four uh, custom fields set up. We can configure those in the settings area. Search function is going to allow us to search based on the asset name. And you see if I do that, we'll use E-3 as an example. You see it's going to filter it down to 40 assets. Um, it shows that right here in the export button right next to it, which is where we can generate our asset uh, reporting from. And it also shows it uh, down here underneath the categories area. So whenever we run a report out of ACC, and this doesn't just apply to assets, it also applies to issues, RFIs, and submittals. We can do it from the tool set itself, or we can do it from the reports area. And again, those are topics that are covered in other tech talks. If I hit this export button right now, ACC is going to export a report. In this case, it's an asset detail report, which as you can see, can come out as in PDF, CSV, or Excel format of just these 40 assets. So it will always obey the filter you have set up either via the search bar or the filter. So I just want to make that clear. So that is a high level overview of the assets tool set, the basic navigation and potential use cases for it. We will go into further configuration of this tool set in future Tech Talks. I thank you for your time and we will see you on the next Tech Talk. Hey there, thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of the other content on our channel.